first and foremost, it means that uh, uh, on the day of judgment, uh, I am accountable as a Muslim. Uh, if I say that I'm a Muslim, I expect to be judged uh, by God as a Muslim. Uh, now, you can talk about all the individual practices and, and the beliefs and, and everything that uh, theologians get, uh, get hung up on here on earth, but fundamentally that's what it comes down to. Uh, whatever I have done, uh, that's the criteria that I expect to be judged by. Now, the second thing is, is what this means is that uh, in becoming a Muslim, I accept every other uh, Muslim man, woman, and child on this planet as a, as a brother and sister. And also by being a Muslim, by extension, uh, Islam, uh, we understand Islam to be the extension of Christianity and Judaism. So not only is uh, every Muslim uh, a brother or a sister, by extension, every Christian is a brother and a sister, and every Jew is also a brother and a sister. Uh, and unfortunately, we see extremists in the Muslim community who have gotten away from this principle, but that principle has always been there uh, to some extent. Uh, that we are all, uh, as the term is not says, the, the people of the book. Um, we all have faith. We all believe in the same God. And though we have different practices, uh, ultimately, as individuals, it's not my job as a Muslim to judge you as a Christian or, uh, or your job to judge me. That's God's job. Uh, what in Islam we respect is that we respect that Christians and Jews uh, have their dispensation with God and that they will be judged by the criteria which they set out. Now, I bring all this up. This isn't normally what politicians talk about, of course, uh, but I think it's important to understand. Now, as a Muslim uh, candidate, I see this as a two-edged sword. Um, obviously, there are, are certain people uh, within this community who, the minute I go out there and I say I'm Muslim, they're going to tune me out, uh, and they're not going to vote for me, and I understand that. But I think they're in the minority. Uh, I think... Uh, Number one, America has always been a culture that's willing to accept people as individuals. Uh, and, uh, you know, that but, well, that was not black. <laughs> that may be true. Uh, but uh, as a Muslim, I have certain advantages uh, when we're talking about the international issues. Uh, you know, I know, I understand the Muslim community well. Uh, at least I'd like to think so. Uh, I understand uh, Arabs and Middle Eastern culture. And being a Muslim, that gives me, uh, if nothing else, at the very least, a foot in the door advantage when we go and we talk to those groups. And in terms of foreign policy and in terms of uh, uh, what our, our soldiers and our airmen and our sailors are facing now, we all know that this is the big foreign policy issue that needs to be resolved. You know, and the only way that this is going to be resolved, excuse me, is we have to, again, we have to talk to each other. Uh, we have to have a comprehensive solution. We can't look at Iraq in isolation and pretend that we can get by not talking to Iran, that we can get by not talking to Syria. We have to stop pretending that we can ignore the Palestinian problem, that we can ignore the problems in, uh, uh, in Lebanon, or that we can back dictators like Mashar in Pakistan, and that that's not going to have consequences elsewhere in the world. Now, being a Muslim, um, I have a foot in both worlds. And... Uh, I hope uh, that we're able to present that well uh, as this campaign progresses. You know, we talk about, we tell people in the Muslim part of the world that they need to have faith in democracy, that they need to practice democracy. I think it would be a terrible message uh, to those people out there uh, if we talk about democracy here in the United States and a Muslim is unelectable uh, by virtue of the fact that he's a Muslim. Uh, I've got plenty of other problems that they can hit on, but hopefully that's not one of them. So. Anyone else? I'd like to have something to say on those bases. Uh, I'm a veteran of World War II, and I sacrificed my life to go and fight for a land where I was born and raised up in. But this day and time, after what I went through with, on this side and on the foreign side, not not in uh, the European theater, but in in the Pacific, with nothing but journals and 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 honest time that 
we knew it was they when you in the middle of those journeys you had to use lights if it was 12 o'clock in the daytime that's just I think those are and mud and more feet I, 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 I slept in fossils and, and pits of water for 11 long days before I could put on a dry feet wagging and going through with all this for a better day for America, that my life would be a better life in the future. But now I compare those times with the times as of now, when the door's been open to the world and everybody can come to America and have a better living, a better choice, and more to say that I can. I was watching TV one night uh, 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 where uh, I don't know whether it was Cuba, somebody who was trying to get over here and they finally made it and they they implied that they sacrificed their life to come to America. They sacrificed their life to come to a place where milk and honey. But I sacrificed my life to live in peace and to have a God to serve. That's what I believe. I believe in God. I know it's a God. And when I got where I couldn't or uh, uh, had to serve in a country or uh, on the end time, any kind of dictatorship uh, and couldn't serve God, I would just, would rather be dead. But I believe in serving a God that I believe in, and, and a God that that a, a, a spiritual God, a spirit God, a, 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 a supreme being. That's my belief. But when out of all of this, and millions and millions of soldiers have made a sacrificial like I made. That this country would be a country that we would have a future for. And this day and time, when this country has opened its doors and every criminal on the face of the earth has walked in with their laws, with their ideas. As we said a while ago, taking the prayer out of school, taking a, a Christianity out of society. And the Christian people, I fought them as well as I do with the, those, those people because they stood still for that. When this woman took prayer out of school, what did the Christian do about nothing? It's time for the Christian people to stand up and elect people that believe in God and elect, and elect people that's going to make a stand for God. That's the only thing going to bring this country back to where it's, uh, uh, it was profound. Only trust. That's the only thing. But when you Christians just sit down and don't do anything, anybody come in with kind of ideas, any, any kind of and they go for it because uh, they believe in this stuff by prosperity and all this and all this. Uh -uh. No, no, no. No, no, no. There's something behind that. It's, you ain't going to get something for nothing. You're going to pay a price. And just a short distance from here, you can go down Palm Beach Boulevard. And it's just almost a city out there. They talk about uh, uh, those uh, Mexicans out there, uh, illegal, what's in here. And it's just a city of those people out there. And, and everybody out there is, uh, 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 they are not here uh, uh, on their own. They, 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 they illegal people who are in here. Yeah, they work for little or nothing, they work for nothing, and they ain't, ain't spending it here. 
He working and making their money, sending it down. And this is what's happening today. Some years ago, we were fighting Japan. And I see it in the paper the other day where Japan and, 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 and America go oh, place, uh, had a softball team playing together. Japanese done come and bought just about everything we have here. See. And just if you're the head of a household and you get weak in your home and that your children and your spouse overpower your voice or your leadership, that house ain't going to stand no more. And that's just the way we're going to be with America. Just keep opening your doors and let everybody flock in here. But they want, that's why they want to come here. They can do what they want and that they want. And pretty soon we're going to be to our knees begging to let me live. Why? Because we got weak. We got weak. Until we get politicians that to know it is a supreme being, it is a God, and above all, in the Christian peoples get behind him and win these elections and put them in over it, that they will stand for the right thing. America going to continue to go down, down, those songs say down, down, down. And when you hit rock bottom, that's it. It's going to be a, and we speak about the churches, the churches. Uh-uh. No, it's time for us to stand, make a stand. In biblical days, those, those people, the Christian people, they took a stand for God. Until they get back. In its perfective places, the Christians don't have to take a stand and back people who believe in a supreme being and believe that there is a God. That's the only way we go overcome this situation. And we, as soldiers who have went, made great, 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 great sacrifice to get this country. Not the way it's at now, but get this country free that we have a, a, a God to serve. And just see where it's going to now. Infidels just about done taking it over. But what was the use? Are you going sacrificing your life? What was the use of it? Until until, until, until the Christians get behind the candidates that don't stand and stand that it would, it, we, we do have a supreme being and without him we are nothing and the Christian back that uh, our candidate up that we get things back at it ain't no one person going to do it it's going to take some to make a stand. I understand you running for office. I understand I heard what you said. But, regardless of what you are, I'm listening to what you are saying. And that doesn't have anything to do with the standard part of life. You believe in the right thing. You believe in sister. You believe in brother. Sisters and brothers. That's all that matters. That's all that gonna matter with God. When you go before God, it ain't gonna be no what you this or what you that. It's gonna all really depend on your heart. Brother, your heart is in the right place. That's what he's. That, that's what. But Jesus came. He came. He came. He came to de, uh, uh, to, to take us out of that sin to get our hearts and everything. Right, that we could be acceptable to the Father. And that's what we're going to have to go back to. The, uh, the, uh, our elder folks say the old landmark. And this new stuff they got, now, it's not going to take us there. Yes, the church is going to have to stand up. Not because 
give me $500 or $5,000 and become a partner or become a seed or whatever they call it. And after you do that, that's it. No. Just being souls for Christ. Just being candidates for Christ. And once we get in that stage of life, God will smile on us again. Because America doesn't turn their back on God. We can't pray in school no more. We can't. Uh, 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 they just about done took in God we trust off of our, our, our monies. But see, God will let you do what you want to do. He's not going to force you to do anything. But when you hit rock bottom, then when you call on him, his ears going to be closed. So where we going to go from that? Down, down, down. And I admire any candidate going to stand and let the world know that they stand for the supreme being, that spiritual supreme being, that above all, we serve a spiritual and a living God. Now, if you can't vote for me for that, if you don't want me in office for that, bye-bye. I'm not going to deteriorate my uh, 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 way of thinking and my way of talking to let you know how I stand or how I feel of all this situation. Because where if you stand for him, he's going to stand for you. And where I may not vote for you, there's ten people out there will. And so we're going to have to come back to the perspective. We're going to have to come back and support what we know. See, a lot of people go to the poll. They just go to the poll because Jack Doe would there say, I heard he was all right. He heard he was all right, but do he know he's all right? No. Listen at that kind of thing. Hear what he got to say. He does his talk by his feet. Correspond with your way of thinking, with your way that you would like to be governed by. That's when you vote for a person. And what we need to do, this is a, this is a mission to Again, you know, like I said, this guy here with the camera, mm -hmm. uh, he's not here to make me look good. Mm -hmm. He's here so that when you, you know, what you're saying here can be heard. Mm -hmm. uh, when everyone is, this community can be heard. This community can really be seen for what it is. And, you know, I, uh, and you have to excuse me tonight. I'm getting over a cold, so my voice is kind of weak tonight. But uh, I'm going to promise you one thing. You know, I am not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm not going to be you. You know, I got a camera on me uh, almost every waking hour, it seems like now. Uh, I'm not that good of an actor. I'm not that good of a, a pretender. I can't, uh, I can't come in here and tell you something that I don't believe. Tell you what you want to hear because eventually uh, it'll come out, and that's that's not who I am. Okay. What I'm going to do is I I'm going to tell you what I believe in, and agree or disagree with me. Uh, I hope you'll at least listen to me, and I am certainly here to listen to you. And the most important thing I, I think that we need to take away um, uh, from our engagement in politics, and the most important thing about what I'm doing is, you know. Politics, we're not elevating people up above us. The guys that we elect in office, they are public servants. They're there to serve the public. And if I'm a representative of 450,000 people, I'm not up there to do what I think is right all the time. I'm up there to represent those people. And the reason that I'm here today, uh, and the reason that I hopefully I'll be able to talk to as many people in this community as I can over the next year, is... Um, I'm presenting what I'm doing. I'm presenting my campaign. I'm presenting my case. Now, if we really want to change things, uh, if what I'm doing is, is something that you respect, what I'm doing is something that you think has the opportunity to represent you well, I'm not asking uh, to go out there every day and be your representative. What I need 
is I need men and women who are willing to go out there and stand beside me, not behind me, beside me, so that we can go up there and we can, we can tell people what's going on and we can represent the real needs of this community. And uh, there's no chance that I'm going to raise the kind of money that a guy like Connie Mack can raise. You know, uh, I've raised around $5,000 this month. Uh, he's already got half a million dollars in his war chest. I know I can't compete him, with him on money. Uh, the only thing that we have going for us, uh, or the main thing that we have going for us, is that if what I'm doing and what I'm saying here today resonates with you, then I am asking you, I need your help. I'm not standing here with a hand out and saying, give me money and I'll see you on election day. I need men like yourselves uh, to work with me. Uh, I need you, number one, to represent how you truly feel, to be straight up, to be honest with me at all times, and to keep me honest, to expect me to do the same. And then we need to work out real, viable solutions, not uh, something that uh, some think tank in Washington uh, decides is good for this community or is good for you or is good for me. We are the people of this community, and we need to figure out what this community needs. Uh, and so the reason I am here today is that this is what I'm asking of you, is to hear me out, hear what I have to say, uh, keep me honest, and then work with me, not for me. Uh, not, I'm not asking for donations. What I'm asking for is I'm, I'm asking for, for your effort. And I know that you are all men of faith. And, you know, faith is something that we talk about as a, as a thing that you have or you don't have. Faith isn't a possession. Faith isn't a noun. Faith is a verb. Faith is something that you do. Faith is something that uh, you have to have in your heart. And you have to have, you have to practice it. And when you practice it and you're true in your faith, that has an effect. That, that spreads to people. When you're honest, when you're sincere and you go out there and you're faithful to your beliefs, if you're faithful, if you're faithful to God, when you go out there and you express that in your actions and you help people out there, you don't just talk about doing things, you don't uh, talk about how you're going to take care of yourself, and you actually go out there and really serve the community, you really do things for the community and for people, that's going to have an effect. And this is what I need more than anything. And it's not what I need personally, it's what this district needs, it's what this country needs. Yeah. And this is what I, this is what I have to offer you today. And this is... You know, I've, I've got my friends here. I've got guys like Pete. I've got a few. I've got a few volunteers who have a lot of heart, not a lot of experience right now in the political scene, and most of them have work full-time jobs, one or two jobs, so they don't have a lot of time. But uh, we need, you know, we need to represent ourselves. We we got to stop depending on, on other people to go out there and do it for us. And if you think that I'm somebody that can represent you well, that's for you to decide. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's. If, if anything, uh, I hope that's that's what we can take out of my time here today. The uh, video you're making, what what how is that going to be used? Uh, we're going to do three things with this video. Uh, number one, uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's working because we're having trouble. We're gonna I'm gonna put it on a loop where it's going to go out on a site called Justin TV where it's going to the whole thing. The raw footage is going to go out. Uh, then I'm going to take the raw footage and I'm going to try and compress it down so that it'll be stored uh, on Google Video. That anybody can access and look at the raw footage, and I'm going to make about probably about a three or four minute uh, uh, video that sums up everything that we talked about here today. And hopefully, I can do justice to that, uh, and all of that's going to go out online. Okay, one more thing to it about education. I am very concerned where this country is going with education. Again, it's going back to opening our doors to each to everybody. But this is the only country in the world that I know of where we go in and the educators are carrying so much of the load. The responsibility should be on the, the students and the parents of those students to learn what they need to know. Um, when I was in Europe, the only people that spoke English to me was the one who wanted my money. But if I wanted to get along in Europe, I had to learn to speak what? Dutch. But I get here in America, mm -hmm. and I almost have to learn another language to survive in my country now. Mm -hmm. You know, I pick up the phone, mm -hmm. and I got to press a button for what mm -hmm. language I want. Yeah. Wait a minute. Am I still in America? Mm -hmm. 
you know. And in the school system. Mm -hmm. We are offering classes in other languages mm -hmm. so that we can communicate. When do they learn English? Mm -hmm. I have to have uh, aides who can speak this student's language so that we can communicate. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind that for a time. But somewhere along the line, should he not be required to learn English? This is, uh, you know, this is something we keep going back to, is the, the, this issue of immigration. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, regardless of if our ancestors came here willingly or not, we're all immigrants uh, in this That's country. Uh, and I don't have a problem with the idea of welcoming immigrants. The problem that I have is the way that we're doing it. We're doing it in a very underhanded way, and it's, it's, it's coming back to haunt us. Uh, you know, right. these guys that are illegals, I'm not going to criticize these guys. These guys, they, they came here to this country, uh, and they are some of the hardest working people that I know of in this country. Uh, but, you know, they didn't come here and fool everybody about being illegals. There's somebody who hired them That's true. knowing that they're illegals. Yeah. You know, when we talk about this problem with illegal immigration, we've got to see both sides of it. You know, there are a lot of people who think we should take these 12 million people in this country uh, and ship them back to where they came from. Uh, okay, if you want to say that, then for argument's sake, I'll go along with that, but then we need to prosecute everybody who knowingly hired an illegal alien. If you're going to punish the immigrants, yeah. then you've got to punish the employers. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the wrong way to go. Now, you talk about the problem with the English language. You know, I see this, uh, you know, working at, a, uh, working at a doctor's office. You know, what I see is a lot of times we have older patients who come in who don't speak any English, but usually uh, they have a granddaughter or a grandson who speaks English and grew up here. You know, my great-grandmother barely spoke English, uh, but of course my, uh, my grandfather and his brothers uh, who grew up here, you know, they spoke fluent English. And the problem that we have with these illegal aliens is we're creating an underground society because we're not willing to pay them uh, what a good day's, what an honest wage, words, work, uh, an honest day's wages. We're not willing to pay them that. Uh, so number one, we're taking jobs away uh, from people who would be doing that job for a decent wage. Uh, that job's not available because we're paying them under the table. We're paying these illegals under the table. And it creates an underground society. It creates another class of people. And it makes, them, it, makes it more difficult for them to learn English. Um, because, you know, if you're worried about being deported at any minute, how much are you going to invest in the culture? Now, having said that, I'm also, I haven't been a politician my whole life. And I've got plenty of, plenty of Latin friends who have, who have told me, you know, that within that community, uh, I don't think it's the majority, but I think there is some people in that community who feel, hey, you know, there's more Latins in, America, in the Americas than there are uh, uh, English-speaking people. Eventually, we're going to be the majority. And I know there is some inertia on the part of the Latin community to learning English. Uh, and like you said, I, I, when, a lot of times when people talk about, uh, you know, uh, like the movement to make uh, English the official language, in theory, that's a great idea. Uh, but you have to look at how that's actually practiced because I think uh, we should have bilingual education is great as long as it's gearing people towards learning English. Uh, that's what you need to do with, with bilingual education. I mean, if, if a kid comes here uh, and uh, he, doesn't speak, uh, he doesn't speak English, you don't want to penalize him. You don't want to hold him back two, three years. You want to work with him, but you want to make sure that you're gearing that, uh, that child to learning English. You know, and, and the problem that I have is, is uh, a lot of times uh, people want to pass this English-only legislation. When you read between the fine lines, you know, what they're talking about is they're saying, okay, you can't have medical documents in two languages, you can't have banking documents in two languages, you know, and I would love, it would be much simpler if I, I could uh, call up Bank of America and it was everything, didn't have to go through that one step. But, you know, these immigrants, they are a part of this country. Uh, and America, um, I, I've traveled a lot in South America, you know, and um, one thing that I find when you, when you go south of the border, or, and, and the same thing is true in Africa as well, um, we are an older population here in the United States and, and, here, uh, and here in America. And when you go to Africa or when you go to South America, there's this amazing, like, youthful vibe. I mean, it's an energy in the streets uh, and with the people. And, you know, you look at the... 
I don't have a, an exact statistic, but uh, you know, in South America, the majority of people are under the age of 30, and I believe the same is true in Africa as well. And then you look at the demographics here in the United States, and we're an older population. So, I mean, we need we need immigrants from around the world to, to help keep this country strong, but they need to come here and understand that they come here to be Americans. You know, I think uh, a friend of mine, we were talking about this the other day, the, the only sacrifice that we have ever, I think, uh, of immigrants that come here, the one sacrifice that we've asked them to make is to learn English. You know, we've never told anybody you have to give up your entire culture, your entire way of life, but we've asked them to learn English and to be a part of, of the American community. Uh, and, and I think that's what we need to do.